So I call this uh, smart by design because um, somewhat like our previous speakers, that smart is actually a very important word. And I think being smart about technology, being smart about everything that you do is a very important component of, of an architectural practice. Um, we designed a house, so my colleagues, David Constable, Miriam Tuadros, uh, and Tom Cito are here, Kevin Bridgman. It, nothing gets done by one person, but I will represent this very wonderful house and, and our clients uh, who are actually here in the room as well tonight. So this is a house, and this is my first house because I always thought houses are maybe not good for a big architectural practice. Um, they are a very intimate experience with a client, and uh, I think you have to look very carefully at the context into which you build a house. So this house uh, is for Rosedale. I'm not sure how many of you are from Toronto, but it's a very specific neighborhood um, in a leafy green neighborhood adjacent to Subway, CN Rail, Bloor Street, Ravine, uh, a fantastic location in the city and a great neighborhood to live in. Uh, but it has some constraints. There is uh, the South and North Rosedale Conservation Districts, which has put some very serious restrictions on anything being built in the neighborhood. So our clients took on the property that they bought, assuming that they would not be able to remove the C-graded house that they have. And the Conservation District gives you a number of restrictions. A houses cannot come down, the red ones, the darker green ones, or B houses, also not down, cannot come down. But the C house uh, is, if you can prove that what you're going to build is better than what exists, then you have um, the opportunity to make a case for your house by going through the Ontario Municipal Board, which almost no longer exists, but is actually very restrictive and expensive process. So when you're at your wit's end with the house that you live in, um, this is the, the moment at which you enter into an OMB discussion. So the house that sat on the site um, was not a very smart house. It was a house that apparently was designed for a property in Muskoka, north of the city in the Lake District, and at the last moment somehow got transferred to uh, Thornwood Road in South Rosedale, um, in 19, built in 1936. And I think you could see very small windows, probably no insulation for the time that it was built, and not, not, not a very receptive looking house, particularly even in the context of Rosedale houses. But our clients made it their home, and they actually uh, sed seduced the neighborhood, I would say, with three beautiful children and um, very amiable personalities and a wonderful landscape uh, uh, design that they, that, that they established in the front of the house. The property itself is irregularly shaped, as you can see on the inside curve, the inside corner, very little frontage uh, on, oh, this is the, uh, hmm, it's an older version, I'm going to have to, inside corner of uh, Thornwood and Pricefield. And it's an unusual, unusual street, or maybe it's a typical Rosedale street in that it has single family homes, but it also has uh, larger apartment buildings that were built in the 60s. So we were able to, you know, we looked very closely at how we might uh, fit this house into the Rosedale neighborhood. Because I think typically what people feel is that contemporary homes are, um, don't fit. You know, they may give you larger spaces to live in, but they are not, uh, they're not contextual. So we look very carefully at the neighborhood, at the long, lean buildings, at the short, fatter ones, at the coloration of the brick, and really analyzed what it would take to fit a new house in. So this particular slide shows you at the top, there's the old 1936 house sitting within the context of things that architects look at, the, the roof edge, the eave line, the, the, um, the kind of proportion, and then the house that we inserted in there, which uh, fell very closely into the guidelines that were uh, delivered to us by the OMB, the successful OMB process. Uh, we looked at, those guidelines gave us an envelope into which we could build, and so we very strategically put our house into that, and I call it our house because I live in the neighborhood, and so as I walked, as this house was under construction, my husband and I would walk around the neighborhood, and she was, should we go see our house? And so it was a bit of a shock when we had to hand it over to our, our clients whose house it really is, but our house uh, was... Uh, you know, thinking about what it was smart to do, how to get through this, through the approvals process. So these are uh, kind of earlier renderings. 
I would say our clients were smart. They had lived in this house, on this property, and they understood the constraints of the site, which had, it's on the ravine edge, but it also had a, a transmission tower uh, positioned, which we could, through the design of the house, we could essentially remove that transition tower. They asked for the kitchen to be the kind of central focus of the house, that the house connect to the ravine context, and that it be a house for three children to scamp around in. Three stories and um, a smallish footprint. The site was actually relatively small to not cover that site with a house. And to have living spaces that were generous and well proportioned, but again, took advantage of that ravine site. So the plan was uh, centered around the kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, it had, which you see at the center, and I don't have the way to show you, but I the, centered around the kitchen, which is really at the center of the plan. On the right side of the screen is the garage, because our, one of our, our client is actually a uh, physicist, as well as a, has a devotion to repairing older cars. And so he wanted to be able to store and uh, keep older cars on the ground floor and the floor below uh, with a car elevator. And then to have an ensuite of rooms that would take you from kitchen to dining room to living spaces and actually really embrace the green space at the front of the house uh, as well as at the back of the house. Uh, the three floors of the house and basement on the left and rising up through the house. We wanted, because of the position on the street, the house had to turn it away from, in a sense, turn away from the headlights and the vehicular traffic that happens even in this quiet neighborhood. And so we layered back from that front condition. So bedrooms are at the back against the ravine. And again, a sort of screening layers, as you'll see, uh, from the street into the deeper into the house. The design inspiration was the golden ratio. And this was a, a very specific request from our client who was a physicist. And I was advised uh, not to go too deeply into it, but for those of you who, who don't know what the golden ratio of the golden section is, it's one of the most elegant and beautiful ra ratios in the universe. It's defined as a line segment divided into two unequal parts, such that the ratio of the shorter proportion to the longer proportion is the same as the longer proportion to the whole, which is why I read it. But it, the golden section uh, pops up in um, throughout nature, in water, in DNA, in uh, the number of teeth that we profess, uh, possess, in art and, art and architecture, in music, in philosophy, in science, and of course, in mathematics. So we employed the golden section throughout, and it, it delivers, architects are obsessed with this as well, it delivers a very elegant proportion into spaces. So we uh, um, analyze that proportion, the, the ratio, the 108 degrees of the um, five-sided object, which define the angle of incidence between the main building, the street, and the, ang the kind of hockey stick angle it is de derived from the golden proportion. And underneath the light blue lines you can see are the places that we were able to extract that proportionality. I think our physicists would probably give us about a 7 out of 10 on our um, delivery. But it was, it was something that we were very committed to. And it actually was something that uh, uh, um, uh, ultimately influenced one of the layers of the house, the front screen, and it was derived from um, the golden section. So I love these pictures where we show the house inserted into the neighborhood. And this is where I think the, you know, very much I'll talk about the technology as we go through this, but this idea of smart, of how to work with your, work with what you have to actually um, sort of see that house in the context. And I think you see a lot when a house is under construction and how its relationship relates, siting is so critical, how it relates to the, to the green ravine site that it um, find, will find itself on. So the integrated technology um, is modest in a sense. In a sense, I think, you know, like our first speaker, I think it's smart to be smart about technology. 
how much will last, how much does it anticipate the future, you know, how can you integrate it into technology, into the house such that it, it can order the systems that are put into the house. So that means the shades, the light, the climate, let it be responsible to seasonality. Um, hide it away, let it, be you, let it be something you can pick up on an app. I'm just going to walk you back through the house, and this is um, the living space that connects back through the dining room and into the kitchen, which is again that central portion of the of the house. And from here, it, you know, I was thinking about the uh, the kitchen as a kind of command center. You know, how does it command not only um, the homework room, which I'll talk a little bit about, but the the living spaces of the house and the exterior. So again, you know, technology is inserted seamlessly and integrated into every aspect of it. Even the, the curve on the exterior of the house is accommodated within, again, part of that golden ratio and leads you upstairs to um, um, bedrooms above. I, I thought one of the smartest things that our clients asked for too is a homework room for their children. They didn't want computers or televisions in their bedrooms. They wanted the bedrooms to be relatively modest and to be places for repose and for reading. And so this homework room, which actually is the library equipped with computers layered immediately behind the, the, the kitchen, you know, has access to the kind of command center, but is a very separate room for that kind of family activity. Uh, upstairs on the second floor, along the street edge, is the circulation of the house, which is uh, has books and it has art in it, but it actually the bedrooms are one layer back. So this is very much uh, the layering of the house uh, that you see. And uh, the spaces upstairs, which are, you know, really benefit from, if you're a smart architect, you use the context. It's a very beautiful, and you find a very beautiful chair. The bathrooms, again, the idea of spa, some smart technology that's incorporated into these bathrooms in terms of lighting and shades and screening. And then a house that really gives back to its context so that when it is, it's a, rather a lantern within the green neighborhood that it's in. And then there you have that screen, which is really an art piece. David Constable sort of took this on as, a, as an art piece. We thought about getting an artist, and then we thought, actually, we're the people to do this. And that screen that is uh, screens the, the children when they're doing their work, screens the headlights, but actually engages the neighborhood in a, quite a bit of dialogue, as does the art of our clients, which resides on that upper level. And actually, some of it has neon on it, in it and is um, a kind of major attractor. So, you know, my take on smart houses is that to be smart, you have to think about um, architectural design excellence. You think about massing and proportion, about materiality, uh, and about creating elegant solutions in which to live. And that you are, it's a pri there's a private element to this, but there's also a very public and engaging community element to a house. And I think this house tries to be smart in many ways. Thank you.